Since Israel launched its war on Gaza last year, the conflict has spilled over into Lebanon, Syria and as far away as Iran. Israel has killed senior Iranian and Hezbollah commanders who back Hamas, including its leader who was killed in Tehran. In July, fears were growing of a wider regional war. Israel's bordered with Jordan, which has been stable for decades, saw some violence over the weekend. A Jordanian gunman killed three Israelis at a border crossing in the occupied West Bank. The rare attack comes amid soaring violence in the occupied West Bank, where the Israeli military has been carrying out major raids this month. All of Israel's border crossings with Jordan have been reportedly closed after the incident. And on the same day, Israeli airstrikes that were reportedly meant to target Iranian forces killed more than a dozen people in Syria. The assault comes against the backdrop of the Gaza conflict, where Israel's offensive has killed more than 41,000 Palestinians since October 7th. And for more, Marvan Kabbalane is joining me now from Doha. He is the director of the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. And from Istanbul, Navar Shaban, a conflict analyst at Omran Center. Gentlemen, hello and thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. So Marwan, Israel's northern border has always been tense with frequent exchanges between Israel, Hezbollah and Syria. But its uh, border with Jordan had remained relatively stable and calm until last Sunday when a Jordanian gunman killed three Israelis. So the question is, how tense has the situation become on the border with Jordan? Well, unlike Syria and Lebanon, the Jordanian-Israeli relation has been ruled over the past three decades by a peace treaty between the two countries. But as you know, because of the war in Gaza, tension is rising high in the region, throughout the region, in fact. And that was uh, the incident, the shooting incident on the... King Hussein Bridge uh, between uh, Jordan and uh, the West Bank has been marked as one of the uh, events uh, which have uh, uh, brought uh, to the fore uh, the reaction of the Arab street uh, against uh, the havoc the Israelis are wreaking uh, across across Gaza over the past over the past 11 months. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jordanians are trying actually to minimize the impact of that uh, of that event. And they are trying to uh, to, say, to say that it was an individual action by uh, by an individual uh, guy who has been perhaps affected by uh, by the genocide the Israelis are committing in in Gaza. So I don't see that uh, this incident will lead to a major change in the relationship between uh, between the two sides. I'm mm -hmm. talking about here. Uh, Jordan and Israel. So now our Israel's airport authority says all border crossings uh, with Jordan being closed uh, following the incident. Could things escalate further? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I do agree with Dr. Marwan. I do not see things going to escalate. Uh, it, it was reported in the media from the Jordanian side and other platform that it's an individual incident and uh, uh, tension already high. So uh, I think there will be a, a, a rapid uh, uh, movement from both sides to contain this uh, uh, incident or contain at least its effect because it's happening uh, uh, again uh, in uh, already uh, super high tension uh, region. Uh, we're witnessing a massive strikes uh, right now uh, being conducted in southern Lebanon and even part of Syria. Uh, so I don't think the Israeli need something else on their plate. That's why uh, it's more probably that it will be contained and it will not be escalated to something else or another front or sub front that the Israeli have to deal with. Uh, again, I don't think that it will affect the, the relationship between the Jordanian side and the Israeli side. The border might be closed. Uh, th there might be more precautious measurement uh, security-wise, but rather than that, I don't see it escalating to something uh, uh, as defined as a military or a security uh, activity against the whole incident so, or its effect. Myron, where does Jordan stand on Israel's war on Gaza? Well, the, Israel, the Jordanians have, from the very beginning, ex expressed their concerns about the Israeli war on Gaza because the Jordanians, they have always held the views that uh, the far right in Israel might be planning actually to uh, to implement uh, the old plan of transferring the Palestinian population of the West Bank uh, uh, 
uh, towards Jordan. Uh, because if you remember at the very beginning of this war, there was some people within Israel talking about pushing the people of Gaza Strip towards Egypt. So the Jordanians are very, con very much concerned uh, about any plan, especially now, you know, that Israel is ruled now by the most extreme, uh, right extreme government uh, in the history of, uh, of, uh, of Israel. Uh, and uh, Netanyahu is one of those, actually, who have been talking about Jordan as, uh, as the real home of the Palestinians, mm. or the, the home of the Palestinians. Uh, as you know, I mean, Jordan, half of the population of, of Jordan actually are Palestinians. Uh, so the Jordanians must be extremely concerned about the ramification of the Israeli war in Gaza and also perhaps more concerned about the escalation in the West Bank. You know, yeah. I mean, there is another less reported, underreported war that is taking place, in fact, in the West Bank. The Israelis have killed so far more than 700 Palestinians. They have been actually destroying uh, uh, entire quarters in Jenin, in Tulkarem, and in other Palestinian cities in the West Bank. So, yes, I mean, the Jordanians might even see this incident as, uh, as another uh, uh, signal about a possible, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, يعني, uh, tension, uh, not necessarily between the two governments, but you can't ignore the yes. Arab public opinion in either side of the borders. At the end of the day, that was a man who felt very much, uh, who was motivated very much by anger, yes. and he acted accordingly. So, um, Navar, compared to other uh, regional leaders like Egypt, Sisi, and Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who have been very vocal against Israel, Jordan's King Abdullah has been in comparison more reserved in his criticism. So the question is, does he risk alienating the Jordanian public with his silence? And could that be a political threat for him? So uh, here's the thing. Uh, uh, there is a lot of like uh, concern security wise to the Jordanian government escalating or even it, it doubles the size when it comes to other countries. We, uh, as Dr. Marwan said, that the, there was talks from the Israeli side from the beginning to push people to the Jordanian side. So I guess that the 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 the, the size of the criticism or uh, the against the campaign or the official statement from the Jordanian side have been limited or accordingly going in a parallel way with the whole uh, uh, concern security wise because they do have the border and thus now you have this incident happen it's an individual act but concern are much higher of course people just uh, we know that half of the people in jordan are palestinian so i i do believe that there is uh, 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 measures are being done to contain the anger not security wise internally but at least in, in somehow covering the, uh, uh, filling the gap of the unpolitical movement by uh, uh, sending aids, by uh, trying to support the people of Gaza in a different way, trying to contain the anger in the street. This incident might be an alert or alarming thing that it might occur. That's why both of the uh, both of the Israeli side and the Jordanian side, I think th they don't want this to happen because it will uh, explode the region. Because already we are seeing expansion yes. in the conflict to different areas. So, thus adding to this, adding to this incident, uh, the the effect of it, uh, it must be contained from the perspective of the Jordanian government because. Uh, the, the the region and their border don't need any extra yes. uh, conflict or uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 So, Marban, on the other hand, on Sunday, Israeli airstrikes reportedly hit uh, Iranian forces in Syria, killing more than a dozen people. What were these strikes specifically targeting, you think? Well, I mean, you know, the Israelis have been actually um, targeting uh, uh, either Syrian regime uh, sites or uh, Iranian, pro-Iranian militias, Hezbollah, uh, and, uh, and other militias or forces that are uh, seen by Israel as, uh, as posing a threat to its uh, security. So there is nothing really new about this, except for the magnitude of the attack, because for the first time, perhaps we have seen dozens of people getting killed Yes. Uh, in a massive airstrike uh, uh, against the uh, scientific research center uh, in, in, in Musyaf. 
and uh, nearby sites. Yes. So most people, the estimation is that um, uh, mainly uh, it's uh, uh, it's a, a stockpile of uh, of weapons uh, that is uh, mainly belong to the either the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard or uh, or um, uh, militias that yes. are actually uh, uh, linked to the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, uh, Hezbollah and other militias. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. And that's all for this edition of Straight Talk with me, Aisha Subarkash. If you've got any comments, please share them with us on X at Straight Talk TRT. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye.